Perfect. All right. We'll call the November 9th meeting to order. Go ahead and take roll. Walters? Here. Vogel? Here. Dvorak? Here. Anderson? Here. Sarchak? Here. First item of the agenda is approval of the agenda. I have no additions or corrections. I'd take a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Anderson? Yes. Sarchak? Yes. Walters? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Dvorak? Yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a presentation from Mr. Greg Edwards, President and CEO of Catch Des Moines. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, good evening, Council, and anybody else who's joined in here today. Um, probably not going to be as uh, bright and cheery news as I normally are this time of year when I report to you all. Um, as you all can imagine, this pandemic has had a huge effect on uh, all of us and uh, in particular the travel industry. Um, just some stats, our industry alone um, employs in the nation, we employ one in 10 jobs in the nation. Um, more than half of the 15.8 million people employed in the travel industry are um, laid off currently. Um, at the uh, height of our pandemic, we uh, probably had layoff, layoffs of over 10,000. In the metro area, our industry um, supports about 21,000 jobs. So um, about half of those are still in layoff status, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, during the height of the pandemic, five hotels in the metro had closed down. Um, they've all now reopened. Um, and I'll show you some stats on hotel occupancies and things like that as we go along. Our budget, as you all know, we um, operate um, a lot on hotel motel tax and our budget this fiscal year was cut by 54%. Um, we eliminated 25% of our staff. Um, we uh, cut all kinds of, of programs out. Um, we cut our salaries by 5%. Um, and just really readjusted our entire budget and our entire strategies, which I'll talk to you here in about um, shortly too. Jenny, you can go to the next slide, please. A month or so ago, you should have received um, this uh, annual report from us giving you really good news from last year. As you'll see here shortly, we had really a, we were going really, really strong um, even our booking pace for future years and things like that was very strong. Um, our impressions, our, our marketing, uh, all of our marketing advertising paid off really well. A lot was due to that little thing that was here in February, which was the last hurrah, which was the Iowa caucuses, which got us you know, all kinds of national, international press and a lot of impressions about Des Moines and the metro area. We also had a great booking year. You can go ahead. Up to the next slide, Jenny. We had a good booking year until this hit, um, COVID hit. We've now tracked 326 events, uh, conventions, sporting events, meetings, et cetera, that have either canceled or postponed with an economic impact of um, or over $290 million. <clears throat> and that's still counting. You know, we still have a lot of good things on the books for next year, but that is slowly, um, some of those are slowly fade, fading away too um, as we go. Um, major events that canceled, uh, you're probably aware of the Farm Progress Show, World Pork Expo, um, the Ironman competition, a lot of state conventions from Iowa bankers to Iowa school boards and on and on and on. So the, uh, the hits just keep coming coming in. Next. On the sales side of things, as I mentioned earlier, we actually had the best booking year in our history. We, we booked over 300, where we booked at 388 new conventions, meetings, sporting events last fiscal year, which uh, really beat all of our old records. Um, unfortunately, some of those have now gone away. The good news is most of those are way into the future. Um, 2022, 23, 24 in that time period. Um, this year, our board approved our goal to be at 220 event bookings, um, which is quite a quite a bit lower. But uh, 
you know, at this point, we're really struggling um, to get there. But, uh, you know, we're hoping now with some good news with vaccine and what have you that um, maybe things will pick up um, at least in the second, third quarter of next year. Um, COVID-19 effects strategies, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we really took a hard line look at what we were doing, what we were promoting, and um, really pivoted our, our strategies dramatically. Um, immediately, we began holding weekly hotel meetings and communications with our hotels and partners. Um, we monitored all the cancellations and, and uh, communicated those appropriately to all of our constituents. Um, we promoted our local business. We, uh, along with the Greater Des Moines Partnership, created the hashtag DSM Local Challenge, which supported not only the, the hospitality industry, but small business and, and things like that throughout the metro. We came out with a hotel bond program early on, um, local resource hub on our website. We did Des Moines Restaurant Week the end of August, and we've come out with a ton of new videos because um, we're doing an awful lot in the um, in the uh, social markets and things like that, which don't cost us as much money in advertising, um, and really promoting the outdoors, the uh, bike tra trails, uh, walking trails, um, our water systems, just all our state parks and things like that as well. This is our STAR report. Um, you can spend more time on this study and that, but actually the red line is the occupancy, hotel occupancy. And the, this is data that we get on a weekly basis. Um, the green line is the rev par, that means the revenue per occupied room in a hotel. And then the uh, blue line is the average daily rate. We can see the huge drop from February where we were running um, you know, over nearly 70% occupancy, I think 72%, with an average daily rate of like $110. And now we're running um, through the end of September anyway, we still haven't received October numbers. Um, we're running at about 42% occupancy with an average daily rate of um, barely $50. So huge, huge revenue cuts for the hotels, um, as you can see. Next slide will show you, this is what we look at weekly. And you can see these spikes. Again, the red lines are the occupancy, hotel occupancy. And you can see these um, spikes. We saw a nice spike in July. We were actually able to secure, a, uh, it was called the Nike Tournament of Champions, which was a girls youth basketball tournament. It brought in about 3,000 people over a uh, three week period. It was played at the Iowa Event Center. Um, so you saw the spike in July. The spike there in August, believe it or not, was Duratio, the storm that hit Iowa. Um, we saw a huge impact of hotel rooms, not only locals that had lost power and things like that, but I think we also saw people from other parts of the state coming to Des Moines to at least escape where they were and wait till power situation got back on. And then you see some fluctuations when we've had some activity it's kind of interesting to see that hotel occupancies are actually now higher on the weekends than they are during the middle of the week, which is totally opposite of any trends. Um, business travel just hardly even exists right now. So um, we just keep an eye on things and, and keep promoting. Um, next, this is another chart that we uh, really do for our board of directors and keep them informed. Um, here, the red line is where we were last year, actuals. The blue line is our budgeted line item, or what we budgeted for this year. And then the yellowish green line is where we are actually. So the good news is we did budget very conservative this year. So we are beating that budget revenue-wise currently. Um, still yet to see what that third and fourth quarter going into 2021 will bring. Go ahead. This is our TAP report, which is um, really our PACE report that um, our constituents really depend on. This shows you our, our booking pace for bringing in conventions, meetings, and events into the future. Um, you can see we're well ahead of PACE. Um, the red line is our definite room night bookings. 
So we're ahead of pace this year, this 2020 into next year. Um, we're right at pace in 2022. 2023 is a big year. Um, and then we also compare ourselves to cities of um, comparable size, Lexington, Providence, Spokane, and then also cities that we compete a lot with, which are larger, Louisville, Milwaukee, and Omaha. And you can see on that line that we um, are actually ahead of pace above them as well. So we're pretty pleased with at least our bookings and, and where we're going. Just a couple more highlights on sales. Um, obviously, we focused on, immediately focused on retaining what we could still keep on the books. We have a lot of communications with, with planners. Um, we actually started a new communication with state association meeting planners, Iowa Bar, Iowa Bankers Association, Iowa Board of uh, Realtors, all these different groups. Um, checking in with them quarterly, finding out what's your future plans. Have you started up any meetings? Obviously, nothing is happening yet. Happening yet. Um, we also uh, put together a national advisory board of national planners, sports planners, um, convention planners, corporate meeting planners, and we now meet with them quarterly too. And these people are from all over the country giving us feedback on what they're hearing in their industries and um, it's still not really rosy news it's um nobody's really doing anything at least through the first two quarters of next year um, we've been keep keeping uh, top of mind with all of our planners doing mailings um, really touching base with them constantly um, doing a lot of uh, networking through uh, the virtual channels and things like that then on the marketing side, as I mentioned earlier, really shifted a lot of our strategies. Go ahead, next next slide. Um, and targeted primarily leisure market. You know, a lot of stats are, are telling us that people still want to travel. They want to visit friends and families. They want to take road trips. They want to stay closer to home. So we've really capitalized on that. Um, still not bringing in huge numbers, but it's helping some, as I mentioned the weekend business is uh, increasing somewhat. Um, you can see all the different promotions we've been doing and will continue to do um, throughout this fiscal year as well until things change. So bottom line, we are still able to, connect, to create a 40, over $47 million economic impact to the metro area um, by bringing in all these um, events that we do. On that, I'm happy to take any questions or comments that you may have. I appreciate you doing this, Greg. I know it's uh, not easy, but I appreciate you being honest and putting all this information out there. It's just out of curiosity, what are you hearing um, nationwide for the trends for next year? Are literally into third, fourth quarter, or are they hoping to south yeah. second quarter too? There, there's still no. There's not. There's not much in the second quarter. Um, it'll yeah. be interesting, really, to see what happens in Iowa, even with like, you know, the state girls' boys' basketball, state wrestling. Um, we had a huge wrestling tournament in last weekend. I should have mentioned that. We had three thousand wrestlers, youth wrestlers. Um, nothing says COVID like a little wrestling, you know. But. Um, and it went well, you know, it, it helped boost the economy and all that good stuff. But, uh, yeah, we're not hearing much at all through uh, through the summer months. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just add, you know, it, it, the same thing Jason said, you know, thanks for doing this, Greg. And, and as someone who's uh, probably whined too much about the relatively minor impacts that COVID has had here in the tenor of your voice. I know this past eight months has been probably unbelievably tough for, for you and your folks and, and the people you support. So just know that uh, my heart goes out to, to you guys and all the tough decisions you had to make and appreciate what you're doing and, and hang in there. I, I, hopefully next year we get back to the, the, the vivacious uh, presentation that you usually give us of uh, throw in some snark and some good stuff and but uh, I, I, you know it's good 
grounding conversation. I appreciate the honesty and uh, appreciate your guys' approach and uh, just know that it probably doesn't mean a whole lot, but it, 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 we're, we're, the impacts aren't uh, aren't uh, blown over um, to, to your organization and, and all the folks that you guys support. I appreciate that. Hey, just, 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 a, just, a, just at least the positive. You do have, uh, you did get the NCAA's again for twenty three. So, right? We did. We, yes. We did. Okay. We did have a bright there's, smile. there's, there's a smile on your face. So that's there go. good. Twenty twenty three. We got it. There you go. Yep. Rob stood it well. Thank you very much, Greg, for the the information, and uh, we look forward to better news as we move forward. It can't get a whole lot worse at some level so it's all up from here what doesn't kill us will make us stronger right you got it you got it thank you and thank I'll you. Echo that as well thank special you. thanks to you and your staff because i know you guys aren't you know you're doing more with less you've got to fight harder for everything you get and every win you get is all that much more important for the future but i know it's got to be tough times right now so thank you to you and your staff for powering through and continuing to fight for the future, even though I'm sure on a daily basis, you're getting setbacks or cancellations, everything like that. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Rob, for stating everything so well that we all feel. Thank you. Thank you guys. Oh, I, I really appreciate those comments. I really do. It means a lot. And we've had a lot of, a lot of tears uh, around here. So, we, we, we love the positive, so thank you. Good, good. Hang in there. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. All right, moving on. Uh, next item is public hearing. Time to close the regular meeting and reopen the uh, public, or I'm sorry, close time to close the regular meeting and open the public hearing on the proposed rezoning petition of property located in the vicinity of 220 East Vista Lake Avenue from M1 and R2 to R1 single family home. Ask the clerk when the notice is published. October 30th. Any written comments for or against? No, sir. This time I'd like staff to provide a report, whoever that is. I'm thinking it's Kathleen, but you're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, the, this is really just kind of a sort of a cleanup rezoning uh, for the area to the north and east of the school that was previously zoned um, M1 and a little bit of a uh, sliver of R2 and their uh, NAP properties is proposing to change that zoning to R1 to facilitate single family homes um, in and around the, the uh, school and city's parkland. That was quick. Anything else on that? Unless somebody has questions, we don't have any um, anything formal to present okay. from NAP other than just the rezoning. Sounds request. good. We'll get in. We'll get into those at the next piece. All right. Is there anyone on the phone who wishes to be heard for or against the proposed rezoning? Jenny. No one, sir. Okay. Excellent. Then I need a motion to close the public hearing and reopen the regular meeting. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Dvorak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Sarchet? Yes. Walters? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Motion carries. Next item, a rezoning petition for 13.35 acres located in the vicinity of 220 East Vista Lake Avenue within Big Creek Technology Campus from zoning classifications from M1 and R2 to R1. Uh, be the first reading of the ordinance 2020 1800. Need a motion, please. Make a motion. Second. Questions, comments? I just have a comment. I've heard no negative scuttlebutt about this rezoning. I have people have asked me about it, and when I explained it, I've heard nothing negative. Excellent. Roll call, please. Vogel? Yes. Dvorak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Sarchet? Yes. Walters? Yes. Motion carries. 
Uh, next option would be an option or next item would be an option to waive the second and third reading. Anybody wants to make it? I'll make the motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Is there any reason not to? I can't think of any. No, since it was a cleanup item, that's why we gave you the option to be able to waive it if you chose. I think you said it earlier, Ron. They haven't heard anything on this, and, and usually one way or another rezoning we do. Uh, yeah, I agree. Roll call, please. Sarchet? Yes. Walters? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Dvorak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is public comments. This is time and place for comments for any item other than those in a public hearing. Jenny, you have anybody? No, sir. Excellent. Moving on to consent agenda. Take a motion, please. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? Roll call, please. Vogel? Yes. Dvorak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Sarchet? Yes. Walters? Yes. Motion carries. Next item uh, under business item, item A, resolution 2020-133, giving authorization to apply for Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship funding. Chelsea? Yes. So we are asking um, for permission from the council tonight to apply for IDOL's funding. Um, the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship is accepting applications for urban water quality improvement projects. Um, so our thought process on an application would be to ask for a dollar amount for soil quality restoration projects in town. Um, we would like to ask for $50,000. The match requirement would be an additional $50,000. Therefore, it would be about a $100,000 project for soil quality restoration. Um, just some rough math uh, that would allow us to do about 58 properties in town. Um, at this time, it would be my recommendation that we write this application based off of the cost sharing being the responsibility of the homeowner. And if the council wants to designate a dollar amount in next budget year when we get closer to doing the budget, um, we can certainly do that to lower the cost of the cost sharing to the homeowner. Um, we could use LMI money on the project. So if somebody meets the LMI requirements, we could use LMI funds for that homeowner's contribution. Applicate or pre-application is due December 4th and um, we'd like to submit a pre-application before that deadline. Any question? Go ahead. This sounds great to me. My only concern is, um, is the demand more than that? Uh, 58 homes, is there a way to, if it, I mean, I know I can't remember the exact number, I should look it up, but I think in Lost Lakes, there was about that number that, that were supposedly interested, which I know is, is maybe different than actually interested, but um, it, 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 we just lessen the, you know, spread that $50,000 $50, over however many properties we get. Can we do it that way or, how, or do we cap it at that um, 58? Yeah, I think you can. So a couple of things, we can apply each year. So we could apply this year, see how the program goes, apply again next year. Um, we thought 50,000 was a good target as you probably saw in my memo. If we did 58 homes in Polk City, that would be the largest project to date. Um, so I think we're, we're still aiming pretty high. I think that the interest is great. The cost sharing portion might deter some people from wanting to participate. You know, if we're looking at $1,700 for a home um, and the city covering half of that, that's still a significant amount of money that a homeowner has to come up with. So yes, we can do it a number of ways. And, you know, we, we talked about asking for more, but um, we thought that was a good target. No, and, and uh, you're right. I mean, it's, like I said, 
uh, online interest versus actual interest is, is maybe two different things. So, um, and you're right, it, it, it is a pilot. So, you know, have at it, you know, if we do get through the roof demand, but I appreciate going after it at all. So I, I think we're perfect fit for this. Yeah, I think that's a very good strategy, good approach. I would ask this question, and I think it's probably aimed at Jeff more than anybody. Is there any way to prioritize who needs it more? Or probably could, but I think it'd probably be easier just to do it on a first-come, first-serve basis uh, so that we can get those people who really want it done first. But, yeah, I, there is there is ways to – uh, prioritize it on a on a watershed micro watershed basis but some of those people may not want to do it so I think yeah. you got to I think you got to get those people who are poised and and engaging in in this program right now and then let's be successful with it so that next year we're doing the same thing and going yeah let's do 100,000 next year again good strategy yeah and I, 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 there's the potential to get a contractor on board who can give us better rates. So maybe we can squeeze a few more homes out of there too. Uh, if we can get a bulk yeah. rate. Well, so I have a question about, and again, I think the LMI thing is a really good idea. And I think those that are LMI would probably not step forward and say they want this unless they understood that that was a possibility. So it's one of those kind of delicate things of how you approach that and communicate it. But you know, obviously soil quality benefits the whole community. So I don't know if there is a way, you know, to somehow get that out there. Cause again, you know, if you are LMI, you're probably um, less likely to apply for something that, you know, the first benefit that's obvious to people is your lawn looks nice. Um, but again, when we look at community benefit, things like that. Um, and if it's something that we could use LMI funds, I don't know the best way to, communicate that, that that is an option. I think Again, I think when we idea. when we approach the topic of using LMI funding for the project, um, we sorry, we've been meeting with um, Jonathan Swanson from Polk County and he he thought that was a great idea. He just said if you add that component into an application, you'll score well. So yeah, I agree. Communication efforts is going to be very important there. You know, I think this is great. Thank you for the work you put into this. And I think it's a good, thoughtful approach. And again, yeah, hopefully we have even more interested than what we have kind of projected here. But again, too, I think, especially, you know, our first run at it and as people have to match funds, things like that. Uh, but no, this is a, I think it's a, a good size project, a good quantity for the request, um, and very exciting to move forward. Does that mean you're making a motion? Sure. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> second. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Walters? Yes. Rogel? Yes. Dvorak? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Sarchak? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is reports and particulars. Um, Supervisor Brownell was uh, last minute was going to be here today, and unfortunately he got called away and was not able to make it. Um, I talked to him Saturday. He called me, um, so he was wanting to give a little bit of an update. Um, but most importantly, what he wanted to give an update on, kind of relating to what uh, Greg Edwards was speaking, was regarding uh, the COVID situation and the spike they're seeing in Polk County. I've just got a couple notes from that. Um, but then particularly what they're going to try and do, and I hope that he'll be able to come back in a couple of weeks to speak to it. But um, particularly, obviously, they're seeing a huge uh, spike in the area. Um, today, um, Polk County's at 17%. Uh, it was 16.2, I think, this morning. It's at 17% now. Polk City's 14-day rate right now is 19%. Um, it's three-day rate right now is 30 percent. Um, there are about 80 more cases today than there were two weeks ago when we last met. We're up to 309 at last check. Um, so they're um, looking to 
figure out what they can do. Um, I think, and I even heard on the news earlier that they were um, most likely going to be sending a letter to the governor uh, requesting a mask mandate. It'll probably fall on deaf ears, similar to what it did uh, the last time they did. But anyway, that's what they're going to hopefully try and do. There's a couple active ad campaigns I know that's being pushed out um, through both Polk County as well as uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau and, and uh, the partnership and other groups. But um, they're watching it really closely. But most importantly um, from him and others is to encourage mask wearing as much as you possibly can. Um, hopefully they can find a way to get through this. And um, anyway, that's from him. That's what I have. So um, if anybody else says anything else, I'll take it. Going once, going twice. A uh, couple things, I guess. Um, I, we had the um, Parks Commission meeting, talked about a few different things, and um, that was directly after our kind of big last meeting on community visioning. Um, and so I think we got uh, a couple of fronts to, to move there for, for the, the rest of you. Um, I know I gave a booklet that we got, a binder, I should say to both uh, Jason and Chelsea with a ton of good information. Um, I'm sure Jeff's seen it too, probably Ron, but um, all the time spent over the course of this year um, kind of culminated in, in a lot of just great information on different uh, options that, that they were recommending we could do, some pricing, and then a, a lot of great uh, grant information. So um, I don't have a, a URL yet, but I think they'll have an electronic version in addition to the hardcover um, copy for uh, for everybody, hopefully here pretty quick. But um, wanted to, to So uh, just a lot of good information. If anybody needs any more, anything more on that, uh, I don't want to volunteer Jeff or Ron, but I think they got that info too. And, and but I can share, we can share that one way or another. Um, and then uh, we talked a lot about, and I want to give another shout out to, to Jason and Bridget for, um, as, as Jason described in the parks meeting, making uh, lemonade out of some lemons with the tree that came down on the square. I think that, um, well, I think that got done since we last met, but it turned out amazingly. I, I think it's, it's so cool um, and appreciate the, the work that the project did to, to line up the donor and Jason um, to not only line things up, but to be actually out there working and, um, did we ever, Jenny, did we ever estimate the, the amount of uh, sawdust that he carried away from from that? We didn't, but I know it was several hours of hard labor. <laughs> if a lot is official term, that's what it was. But again, great work out of him to, to kind of spearhead that and, and go through it. Um, and then, oh, I do, I do want to thank Chelsea too. So she's she's kind of been stuck with me a little bit more than usual the past couple of weeks working on some financial information and appreciate the time that she spent on that. And hopefully we can go through that and, and share it here pretty quick. But I uh, wanted to, it took a lot of digging as with most government financials, it's not easily attainable. So it took a little bit of work to, to get through it, but I think it'll be good information for us to share. Um, and then last thing, uh, you know, I, we talked uh, at length last meeting um, about the school project and, and I've had a few conversations and I know we got a meeting this week, but um, I definitely think we've, we've got a communication gap there. And, and while things have improved, I definitely want to make sure that we're uh, addressing that um, in a, on a very broad and proactive way from our side. Um, so, so we can have what will probably be a tough conversation regardless, but just have it a little bit more timely than, uh, I think happened in this case with the turning lanes and, and some other things. So um, just wanted to mention that there's, I think there's obviously a, a disconnect there and uh, something that we 
we can definitely make better as we go ahead. All right, I hope we can. And that's all I got. Anybody else? If not, not take, back, just want to say very productive meeting and thank everyone. You want to make a motion? Oh, yeah, I'll make that motion. Second. Motion confirmed. Awesome. Got a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Good night. So long.